Hi there, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Recently, one of our fans, Seth Hansen, asked us a bunch of questions about Master Yoda and his actions post Order 66. One question really stood out for me, and that was, why did Yoda not return to the rest of the galaxy once he was exiled on Dagobah? Was Yoda too old and tired to carry on a resistance against the Empire, or perhaps he was just a coward and had given up hope? Interesting question, Seth, and we'll try to answer it to the best of our abilities. Now, if any of you guys have Star Wars questions, please follow us on our Facebook page and send us a message. We might just be able to help you guys out. Well, after Order 66 occurs, Yona manages to meet up with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Together, the two Jedi attempt a last-minute assassination of the two most important figures in the newly risen Empire, Darth Sidious and Darth Vader. Yoda wants Obi-Wan Kenobi to confront Darth Vader because he believes that the younger Jedi would not stand a chance against Palpatine. Probably true. At the same time, Obi-Wan Kenobi is distressed about confronting his former Padawan. While it might seem stupid for Yoda to send a reluctant Obi-Wan Kenobi on this mission, the end result is that Anakin gets to live because Obi-Wan Kenobi cannot bring himself to deliver the killing blow. Now, Yoda is probably one of the most powerful Jedi in the entire galaxy, so it makes sense that he would go after Darth Sidious himself. But we know that Force powers alone do not win a battle. I mean, Obi-Wan Kenobi clearly is not as powerful as Anakin Skywalker, but by using good uh, lightsaber technique and Force techniques, he was able to overcome any disadvantages that he had. So naturally, no matter how powerful you are in the Force, there are always going to be techniques and strategies one can use to increase their odds of victory and counter other forms. As I've gotten older, I've basically learned that everything in life is a more complicated version of that childhood game we all used to love to play. You know, rock, cat, microwave. It applies to everything. Now, Mace Windu, who probably wasn't as powerful as Yoda in the Force, was uniquely suited for fighting against Sith Lords. His Form 7 Vapid lightsaber combat form, for instance, could absorb an opponent's energy and reflect it back towards them. This is why he was able to soundly defeat Palpatine. Yoda was a master duelist as well and proficient in every form, but he mostly focused on Form 4, the acrobatic Ataru. When Yoda starts the duel with Palpatine, he's unable to switch to Form 7 Vapod because he's either not comfortable with it or prefers other methods. What ultimately ends up happening between these two incredibly powerful and well-matched Force users is a battle mostly focusing on Force powers. This is very similar to a rocket launcher-only deathmatch in Halo, uh, it's not a good situation for either combatant. Everyone kind of loses, ultimately. At the end of Yoda and Palpatine's little battle, their force powers create an explosion which sends both combatants flying across the Senate floor. Yoda falls down several stories, and Palpatine manages to hold onto the high ground and call for some clone shock trooper reinforcements. Yoda decides to play it safe and flees through a maintenance hatch to a waiting Bail Organa, in a very Luke Skywalker Bestman Cloud City-like way. Now, Yoda admits to Bail Organa that he has failed and now must go into exile. You know, at first glimpse, we might assume that Yoda in this situation has been overpowered by Emperor Palpatine. Maybe he's even afraid of the Dark Lord. But that clearly is not the case. Even during his duel with Palpatine, he was evenly matched. Things could have gone either way, and Palpatine probably knows that as well. Ultimately, Palpatine got lucky and held onto the high ground, and Yoda was smart enough to know never to fight someone on that high ground. So like in most, uh, you know, rocket launcher only matches, the victor was decided by luck and not necessarily skill. Yoda, with his body beaten and battered at this point, was smart to run, especially with clone reinforcements on the way. But ultimately, defeating Sidious at this point was not as important as one might think. I believe Grandmaster Yoda was a Jedi with immense foresight into the future. We know that Yoda sensed and had visions of Order 66 before it actually happened. We also know that Master Yoda was suspicious about the Clone Wars from the beginning. Yoda always made allusions to some hidden Dark Lord who seemingly was puppeteering the entire Republic and even the Jedi itself. While most Jedi became increasingly involved in the Grand Army of the Republic, Yoda probably carefully watched in horror as the Jedi Order began to change and militarize. By the time Order 66 started, Yoda was probably already very aware of the trap the Jedi had basically launched themselves head forward into. By the time the Jedi figured out what was going on, if they actually had moved against Palpatine or his government, the Jedi would have most likely been deemed as enemies of the Republic and democracy. Even if Yoda had killed Palpatine in the Senate at that point, it would have been very hard for the Jedi to prove that what he did was right because to most outsiders, it would have looked like a coup. 
Yoda was also already in the last century of his life. Although his force powers were potent as ever, his physical body was frail and failing. More importantly, sometime around the last year of the Clone Wars, Yoda found new meaning and purpose when he was contacted from the great beyond by Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn. Qui-Gon Jinn had always been a very unorthodox individual, especially when it came to his personal relationship with the Force. While most Jedi didn't try to question the Force and just gave themselves freely to this cosmic energy, Qui-Gon Jinn was always a very curious individual and he ultimately ended up figuring out how to become completely unified with the Force as a spirit. Now, Qui-Gon's own training was not 100% finished when Darth Maul gutted him, but he was aware and conscious enough to be able to pass down his own teachings to Grandmaster Yoda. Being a Force spirit meant that an individual's consciousness no longer was tied to their physical body. Instead, their consciousness would join what's known as the Cosmic Force. There, a Force spirit would live in an in-between dimension where time is no longer linear and the ailments and diseases of the body no longer mattered. In a sense, becoming one with the Force granted an individual with immortality. And for Yoda, this was really important. If he was able to become one with the Force, that meant Palpatine and his Empire could never silence him or his Jedi teachings. And so becoming one with the Force was a very top priority for Yoda. Once he was able to do this, Palpatine would never be able to find him ever again. They basically would be in different game lobbies. And so Yoda would escape to Dagobah and become an apprentice, ironically, in the last decades of his life. He and Obi-Wan Kenobi would both work on becoming Force Spirits so that they could set up an internal defense against the dark side. Being a Force Spirit meant that Yoda could perceive the future almost instantaneously, giving the good guys a huge advantage that Palpatine could never match. The Sith were always obsessed with power and otherworldly pursuits, but because they always actively bent the Force to their will, this meant that they could never enter the Cosmic Force in the way a Jedi could. And so Yoda stays on Dagobah not because he's afraid or because he's a coward, but because it's the wisest thing he can do. Yoda is playing the long game, and more importantly, his wizened ego realizes that others will have parts to play in this grand space opera. And his part, for now, was to find those individuals and mentor them. Lastly, when Seth approached us with this question, he also specifically asked why didn't Yoda come out of hiding to basically murder Darth Vader. Vader was especially vulnerable when he was adjusting to the confines of his new armor. In Legends, he was so clumsy, he was almost defeated several times by a relatively unremarkable Jedi who had survived Order 66. At this point, Darth Vader would have been very easy for Yoda to defeat, but there's ultimately two reasons why he would have never done this. For one, he was already in hiding at the time. Dagobah had a very strong force presence that masked his own force sensitivity. Plus, the world had been wiped off of most galactic star charts and was relatively uninhabited. Venturing out into the galaxy to kill Emperor Palpatine's number two would have been a pretty big blow to the Empire, but ultimately Emperor Palpatine would have found another replacement. Yoda would not risk everything he had been carefully working towards on Dagobah for such a small victory. More importantly, Yoda still remembers the Chosen One prophecy. He also understands quite a lot about the Sith, including their rule of two mentality. Yoda probably considered the possibility that Anakin could still turn against the Emperor and still fulfill his destiny as the Chosen One. And so there was really no reason to get rid of Vader at this point. So there you have it, guys. Although it might seem that Yoda is running away and hiding uh, in Episode 3, what he's actually doing is playing the long game, a much longer game than even Emperor Palpatine is playing, because ultimately, Yoda's still alive as a Force ghost, and Palpatine probably no longer is. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.